Hey guys, just a quick intro for the video. You'll see me replace the TM250 energy management module, the Silverleaf module, because I was having problems with things being shed inside so things wouldn't turn on that were supposed to. One of my four heat tiles wasn't working. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of the AC elements for the Oasis was not working. So it turns out it was a bad TM250 module and that module likely went bad because of another issue that Silverleaf has now come up with a little kit for, um, for certain charge bridge uh, solenoids, which apparently create a spike in the DC system when that charge bridge is activated or deactivated. And so the diode <clears throat> placed in the right position prevents that spike from making it into the system and causing damage. Now, <clears throat> prior to my TM250 failure, it was thought that that spike was only responsible for sort of scrambling the TM102 brains, which was, which is the item responsible for a number of things, but the symptom was that you could not turn on your water pump using the Eplex uh, or the, the, the KIB buttons, <clears throat> either here or in the bathroom. You'd, you'd press the button, the light would turn on, you'd hear the click, and no water. So... Uh, it turns out apparently that you, now that can be fixed with a power cycle and it wasn't causing permanent damage, but it looks like permanent damage can be caused because my TM250 went bad and I just replaced that. So this video just covers replacing the TM250 and installing the diode uh, and you'll see um, you know what I went through to get that done. So without further ado. Okay, so in a large basement area, I've removed this panel. This is the plexiglass panel to the right. You can see the Oasis here. The TM250 power management controller is there. And the solenoid is here. So that's where I'm headed. This is the, the, uh, the diode and in the uh, instructions, if you will, for basically, this essentially acts just as a color code. Uh, as best as I can tell, this is a, obviously black and white, so I've got a dark color wire and a light colored wire, so the dark colored wire from the diode kit appears to line up with whatever color, dark color this is, and white to white here. So I will be making that installation, and I will be replacing the TM250 that's there now. Looks like it's oriented this way. So what, what I've done uh, th until now is I've, uh, per the instructions at Silverleaf, is I removed the controller or the connector rather for the main, the power for this unit in order to in order to disable power management so that everything inside would function normally. Now I have I have had issues with the AC elements on the Oasis occasionally not turning on. When they're supposed to and so i just on the silver leaf panel i turn them off and back on and, and then they go from yellow to blue like they're supposed to when they when they're supposed to be on and running they were just staying yellow before so i'm hoping that putting this back into place and getting energy management back up and running will fix that issue so uh here it goes i don't think there's really a heck of a lot for me to to really video of the installation process it's pretty basic just pull out what's there and you know put the new one, the refurbished one in my case, back in. Uh, and then I will, you know, connect the, the diode to the uh, solenoid. I'll actually do that. I'll do this, uh, the solenoid first before I replace the two, 250 so that I have the electrical protection in place before I go and replace uh, the 250 and risk damaging it as well. Well, I take that back. So the connections are on top. I'm going to have to dismount this and I'm dealing with some what could end up being really a dangerous situation if I don't disconnect power. I was hoping to just carefully do this, but I don't think I can carefully dismount this and do the work I need to do. I think that's just too risky. So fortunately, I have an easy way to cut off the house batteries. Most of you 
probably don't have a way to do that. The salesman switch, if you will, won't actually disconnect the uh, the power from, from here. So you'll have to remove the, the positive lead from your your batteries. And in some cases, removing positive before negative is actually a bad idea. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you're, you do the, the right thing for your inverter. I think Magnum inverters, don't quote me on this, I think Magnum inverters need, need negative pulled first, but do your research before you do that. And I'm going to have to disconnect the chassis batteries because I've got house and chassis coming in here. That's the purpose of this, this bridge right here. So I've got to disconnect both sides. So I'm going to do basically a full AC and DC shutdown of the coach before I work on this and I'll have complete safety when I do that. So let's walk through that okay, process. So, even though I'm on short power, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and make sure the inverter is turned off. That's actually not going to shut anything down inside. But what it will prevent is when I disconnect shore power, it will prevent the inverter from trying to take over. And that's really all I need to do. Um, I could additionally, if I wanted to, shut the charger off. You can see the inverter status is off here. So you could come in here whoops, and turn off the charger. And now you'll notice that there's no DC power coming in. So finally, I'm going to just be nice to my system here. I'm going to shut off my air conditioning and my power should go to near zero. But I probably have, yeah, it sounds like the refrigerator is on. So that's where that two amps is coming from. But basically, I'm now quiet here. You'll note that my outdoor temperature reads 58. That's incorrect. It's probably closer about 85 or 90 outside. This is an artifact of disconnecting the TM250. The 250 has the three has three the three temperature sensors uh, connected to it so the outdoor temperature sensor which is not tied to the Dometic systems is independent and so goes offline when you disconnect it and just reads the old information all right so and we'll take a look at uh, just see what the current status of my load shed is and you'll notice it's a little weird right now that should I mean, nothing should be shed right now. I've got a couple things off, which is strange, as opposed to shed, and I've got you know one of them is set to forced, which is also strange. So I'm hoping that when I put the new 250 in and I reset everything, uh, bring everything back online, we'll be good to go. That's one of the other advantages I'll have of doing a complete system shutdown like this is everything is going to get a nice, fresh, clean reboot. So I should clear out any cobwebs <laughs> in the system. So let's head head outside and do a uh, shore power and DC power on both sides. It's just got shore power off. And for the batteries, you'll need to disconnect three, I believe, leads. You'll wanna, there's gonna be a, a lead that's for charge bridge. There's an, a lead for the inverter and there's a lead for the house 12 volt system. So all three will have to be disconnected in my case. I just use my disconnect switch. Right, we'll come out. We'll do the same thing for the chassis. And this is provided. So we'll turn that off. And now I should be 100% without power in here which I will verify with a meter just to make sure. And we'll get going on some surgery. But they're calling the bi-directional isolator, the charge bridge. There's still voltage there, so not safe. And uh, I did I did pull it down to look at it. And one of the connections is, is extremely close. Uh, negative and positive are extremely close to each other. There's almost no way I could safely do this without causing a short so I'm gonna to need to find a way so you can see here that the disconnect switch does not disconnect <laughs> the bi-directional isolator uh, so we've got this separate circuit and we've got another separate circuit two small chassis wires whatever that means so I'm wondering if this has anything to do with it but I'm gonna play around here and see how to actually disconnect this well I tried the fuses I tried disconnecting everything from here and that didn't do it and 
So what I did was to, I wanted to figure out if, it, if the power was coming from the chassis or from the house batteries, since they're at different voltages. This is at 13.08 and the house batteries are 13.2 something. And I was seeing 13.08 at the solenoid. So I knew it was coming from the chassis batteries. So I did some more hunting and I found another connection here. So dedicated wire, this, this must go straight to the, to the bridge, to the solenoid. So disconnecting this did the trick. I now have no voltage over there, so it's safe to work on it. And it's a uh, it's pretty tight quarters over there, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Get that diode in place. Definitely a pain in the neck, but that that's the key. If I had known that, that would have saved me a lot of <laughs> a lot of time and time and dirt. Okay, so definitely glad I disconnected the power. I've dry fitted the the diode here. You can see across the these two terminals, not the load terminals, the battery terminals, but the control terminals. White to white and green to you know to green or you know color. And I'm gonna tell you that when I disconnected this terminal, as soon as, as soon as I moved the bolt, the nut, it caused the copper terminal to hit this one. This is negative, this is positive. You would have had a short here. It was, it's virtually impossible to work with this, uh, this terminal um, without causing a short. So you, you really need to disconnect the power from everything before you, before you do this. So I'm glad I did. So we'll get this buttoned up and right. test it out. I connected all my power back up. Before I did, I just, uh, I was on I, I had not turned on shore power. I just turned on the chassis batteries and the house batteries and all the DC loads were working fine. I came in here, I saw this cycling through. Everything was listed as shed except the last one. And then the last one flipped to shed and then this one flipped to shed and just kind of ran up the line and everything just kind of flipped from okay to shed and back. So it looked like it went through its normal boot up sequence. And so I turned on shore power and slowly but surely all of these moved to okay. And when I checked to make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to, if I look at Oasis, both AC elements are on, the word shed is not here like it was before. My my floor heat I was having weird issues with, so even even if it didn't show shed, mid would not turn on would not go red no matter what I did. So the floor heat is working like it's supposed to. I got my air conditioning coming on, pulling all the kinds of power I'm supposed to be pulling. Outdoor temperature is now reading correct. So I think I'm in good, I'm in good shape. So that was a successful replacement of the 250. Definitely had a defective unit and the installation of the, <clears throat> the diode to protect this happening again and it should prevent me from having that issue where uh, some people um, you know you you were unable to turn the water pump on and off except from the silver leaf so if you tried to do it from any of these KIB buttons like if you tried to hit this the light the light would turn on you'd hear a click but the water pump wouldn't actually turn on and that is another symptom of the, the charge solenoid spiking the voltage and kind of messing things up. In that case, uh, you rebooting the, well, not rebooting, rebooting the TM-102 via the panel here is not sufficient to clear that issue. You need to physically power cycle the TM-102, which you can do by removing the plexiglass panel. You'll find the <clears throat> black box, the TM-102, just like the black box that you saw for the TM-250. You just remove the main and put the main back in, and that will solve your water pump issue. Um, but now that should no longer happen <clears throat> so looking forward to having a more stable system and not having weird silver leaf slash KIB issues. So I'm currently waiting for the charge bridge solenoid to, to come into play. It might not yet because the chassis batteries are still at 13 volts, but I'll keep an eye on this. I'll make sure it does do a, you know, you get the little lightning bolt icon here to, that'll tell you that the solenoid is activated. So I want to make sure that that's working appropriately and I'll monitor the voltages. So. That's that. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy to help.